Hello there and thank you for watching this week's WeatherQuest farming forecast. Well, it's been a relatively settled couple of days. We've had some fairly dry but quite cloudy conditions at times uh, over the past few days and this week, but it is looking like things are going to turn more unsettled into the weekend and through the second half of this week. But before we get onto the forecast, as it's World Meteorological Day, I thought we'd just take a quick look around the world at some recent world weather headlines. There's been quite a lot going on um, in terms of weather across the globe over the past couple of days ago. So here's just a selection of things that have uh, been uh, in the news. So particularly what's occurring at the minute in eastern half of Australia, um, is there's some quite extreme and severe flooding across parts of Sydney and New South Wales from some quite persistent heavy um, heavy rain as two weather systems are kind of colliding there and bringing some quite uh, quite dicey and dangerous conditions with uh, lots of people evacuated. So some quite heavy um, flooding in parts of Australia. Uh, the other direction, it's not strictly a weather story, but in Iceland one of the volcanoes near uh, Reykjavik has been uh, erupting over the past couple of days after something like 50,000 earthquakes over the past few weeks. Um, and it's well worth checking out some of the photos on that online and on, in the news. There's some quite spectac spectacular images um, of the eruption. And then a little bit further ago uh, last week, there was some quite severe weather in parts of the United States. Um, in the northern parts, there was some quite heavy and disruptive snow across, across parts of Colorado and Wyoming. Um, causing quite a lot of disruption to travel there. And that cold outbreak as well that moved further south actually set off some um, early season tornadoes in parts of the Texas panhandle as that cold air moving southwards met some quite warm moist air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. So quite a lot of extreme weather going on um, in, the, uh, in the last 10 days or so. And that's just a sort of summary of the most um, active and, and bits that have been in the news um, recently. Now, before we go into the forecast, just want to highlight um, the advantages of our WeatherQuest farming portal. Um, so this is online, you can subscribe to this, uh, you can get it via email and online. And basically our seven day forecast is a blend of different models that run four times a day. It's also added with forecaster intervention if there's bits that aren't quite right in the models or one model's putting in too much rain. Our forecasters can go in and intervene on that um, and change it and spread out the risk of showers to give you guys the best and most accurate forecast uh, that's possible. So it's well worth checking that out. We're currently offering a two week free trial of that and as well it comes with um, a longer range probability forecast as well as the four week uh, monthly forecast as well. So if you'd like a free trial of that, drop us an email at info at weatherquest.co.uk um, and you'll be able to log on and check out all the information that's on there. So jumping straight into the forecast then um, over the next few days, this is the jet stream. We've been in a relatively quiet area of jet stream over the past couple of days, this slight ridge of high pressure um, affecting much of the south and east of the UK. But you can see this is fairly active area of jet stream, which is going to push through, pushing this front through during Wednesday. So a little bit of rain around um, tomorrow. There's this then slightly quieter period um, for eastern England, where the, that area of jet stream moves away to the east. And then a much more active uh, trough coming in from the from the west. You can see a real kink in the jet stream there, colder air to the north of that, some quite breezy conditions towards the end of the week. And I think things are going to turn that bit more unsettled uh, for particularly Thursday, Friday onwards um, as that moves in from the west. So more unsettled theme to the weather as we go through the rest of this week um, and into the weekend. Uh, this was Tuesday midday, today at midday, we had high pressure out to the southeast. That had been out to the southwest for the past couple of days and that slowly transitioned eastwards and that's what's allowing the more unsettled weather from the Atlantic to push in um, and bring us some rain. So that's transitioning eastwards and moving a little bit further away over the next couple of days. So for tomorrow, uh, you can see high pressure out to the east. We've got this weak front pushing southeastwards across England and Wales during the morning. So that's going to bring a little bit of patchy rain. It might be dry to start in the southeast, but once that's cleared for Wednesday night and then into Thursday, we're looking at scattered showers pushing into Scotland, Ireland, parts of Wales and southwest England as well, uh, particularly through uh, Thursday and into Thursday afternoon. But you can see further east, they're going to be generally a bit more isolated. There should be some decent spells of sunshine during the day on Thursday in the east after perhaps an early touch of frost in the southeast as well. But you can see fairly scattered showers um, coming in from the west. Um, and that's ahead of this deep area of low pressure, that trough that I mentioned, the, the deepening and the, uh, um, <clears throat> the tightening of the isobars as that comes in. Um, with that more active bit of jet stream. So that's ready in there to come through for Thursday night into Friday. Uh, so Thursday evening, still a few showers around across the western half of the UK. Then we've got this more organised front pushing through Thursday night into Friday. That clears to the east during Friday. And then behind that front, some much colder air um, coming through. You can see uh, the front clears to the east and then there's a much colder air mass coming in from the northwest uh, behind that. So it will feel quite chilly on Friday, it will be quite mild to start in the southeast ahead of that front, but once it comes through, turning quite cold. Plenty of these showers um, coming through 
um, over the north and west over the high ground will be quite wintry. The model perhaps going a bit over the top on the wintriness uh, for eastern England. I think that front will, will be pretty much just rain um, and then just feeling chilly behind it. But you could well see some uh, sleet and snow over the high ground in the north and west uh, from any of those showers during uh, Friday and into Friday evening. So a cooler feeling day for Friday, but as we go into Saturday, uh, these wintry showers fade away through Saturday morning. There's a brief little ridge of high pressure builds, but then this next low pushes another front uh, through um, from the west. And you can see the tightening of the isobars there for Saturday. It's going to be quite a breezy day. Friday as well will be quite breezy, um, but you can see there uh, just how windy it will be. Um, but the southeast might just remain dry during Saturday with those fronts um, staying uh, out to the northwest. So a bit up and down over the next couple of days, there should be some bright spells and drier periods in places, particularly further east, but there'll be plenty of showers and, and perhaps at times some quite heavy rain. Um, and then there's wintry showers as well, um, pushing into the western half of the UK. Uh, now, I know there's still lots of people calling on the phone line asking about uh, the potential for spraying and when's best. Um, and I think over the next few days, it's going to be quite tricky. There's some potential during Wednesday and Thursday ahead of that rain when the winds are still that little bit lighter in the south and east. Um, you can see that there through Thursday, still potential. Those green colours there, the ideal spraying conditions. But once that trough comes in and we get these tightening isobars and quite breezy conditions with rain and showers, it will become uh, quite tricky. So make the most of Wednesday and Thursday. Um, that's the best potential for, for spraying. Um, after that, it looks like it will generally become... Uh, just that bit too windy. So looking a little bit further ahead out into uh, next week and possibly into the following week as well, um, this here is the ensemble forecast for pressure and air mass temperature for Bedford in the East Midlands. Um, and basically the ensemble forecast is the same model that's run slightly differently a number of times to give slightly different outcomes and the most likely outcome. So you can see the red line there is the average, that's the, the kind of mean um, model solution uh, for the next 10 days or so. Um, and there's relatively good agreement in terms of the pressure this week. We've got relatively high pressure. The pressure drops for Friday as that trough swings through and then picks back up again for Saturday as we get that slight ridging um, in the southeast. So reasonably good agreement in the overall progression of things uh, over the next few days. It's really into the weekend and through next week when there's a huge amount of uncertainty as to how things pan out and what it will be like going forward. So you can see the spread in these, these gray lines uh, once you get to the end of the week and into the early part of next week. And that spread just stays quite wide right the way through the period. The average basically just goes down the middle. So it's really tricky to know how exactly it's gonna pan out through next week. Basically the, the two main scenarios are that uh, that frontal system uh, that comes through on Saturday will affect north and west parts during the early part of next week before perhaps lifting northwards, allowing high pressure to build. So that's the kind of high pressure scenario, uh, which is a potential and it could be drier next week. The other side of things is that that area of uh, rain across northwest uh, Britain that you saw on the Saturday graph moves further southeastwards, affecting uh, most of the UK. And then actually it stays relatively unsettled through next week. And that's what these model runs are doing here. So there's two quite different scenarios which could play out, either the high pressure dominated one, which would be drier, or the uh, more unsettled low pressure dominated regime, which obviously would be wetter and breezier um, and would be um, much more unsettled. So really tricky to know um, going forward through next week. It's well worth staying on top of the forecast uh, for the, how that might pan out. In terms of temperature, there's perhaps a little bit more confidence uh, during the early part of next week. We've got this dip on Friday into Saturday when that cold air comes through behind that cold front. Um, and then it does generally pick up and there's reasonable agreement through to kind of Monday and Tuesday actually uh, for the south and east as to how the temperature pans out. We generally, once there's that front coming through on Saturday into the northwest, the south of England gets into a, a fairly mild southwesterly flow. And actually temperatures during Monday, Tuesday, it's not out of the question that they could get up to 18, 90, maybe even 20 degrees in places. So it will be quite mild for Monday, Tuesday, um, as there's that southwesterly. But then a lot of uncertainty going forward, as you can imagine, similarly with the pressure, depending on whether high pressure builds, depending on whether we get a, a more northwesterly flow if there's low pressure around. So generally much more uh, uncertain after that, but there is a signal that it might get colder. Even if the high pressure builds, we could get some cold air coming around the top of that high um, and turning things quite chilly. Uh, so the warmest of the temperatures during the early part of next week, um, and then a general cooling, but a lot of uncertainty uh, through the remainder of the period. So this here is one model's idea of the uh, pressure situation next week. This is generally the more unsettled idea, the more unsettled solution to the forecast. We have high pressure out to the east, 
another area of high pressure out to the west. And then the UK is in this sort of trough in between these two uh, where low pressure could bring some fronts, um, spells of rain, a few showers at times during uh, the week. In the drier scenario, this high pressure has pushed in further east and is ridging across the UK, um, leading to some drier conditions. So that's the main uncertainty is how far east that trough moves and how far east that high pressure builds in. Uh, so you can see in this scenario, it's generally going to be relatively unsettled. The rainfall showing up as above average, similarly across Scandinavia and parts of northern Europe as well with that trough. So it could be quite unsettled, but bear in mind the uncertainty um, for that as well going through next week. Um, and a lot of drier weather around um, closer to that bigger area of high pressure uh, in southern, uh, southern parts of Central Europe as well. Um, in terms of the temperatures, with that mild signal um, during the early part of next week, it is going to be relatively above average for much of northern and western Europe, especially when we get into that southwesterly flow, um, things will turn milder. But once the high begins to edge in, that will cut off that milder southwesterly flow and things turn cooler for the second half of the week and we could see some cooler air coming around from the north or, or northwest. So um, warmer temperatures during the middle part of the week, but then for us, it could turn a bit colder um, going forward. Now into the following week, the second week of April, that high pressure that was out to the west has now finally shifted eastwards. And there's a little bit more confidence, I think, in the forecast that that high pressure will have, have moved eastwards by that point, leading to a much sort of more settled and drier picture uh, for the UK. Got this area of low pressure down to the southwest of Europe and then another area of low pressure, uh, sorry, high pressure out to the southeast. So something a bit more settled there as well. And the impact that has on temperatures is that although we've got high pressure building in, there'll be a lot of cooler air coming around the northern side of that high down into the North Sea, bringing some quite chilly temperatures across much of the UK, parts of northern France, um, Iberia, the Low Countries. So quite chilly for northwestern Europe um, in a bit of a northwesterly. Elsewhere, slightly milder than average in, uh, in northern Europe and then a bit mixed across um, the rest of Europe, although perhaps above average um, with that high building in the southeast. In terms of rainfall, well, with that high building, although it's going to be chilly, it generally will be relatively dry. We've got uh, below average rainfall, I think, for much of the UK, France, parts of uh, northern Europe and then parts of Scandinavia as well with that high building in. But with low pressure around to the southwest, it could be a bit more unsettled across parts of the Mediterranean. There could be some above average rainfall uh, for a few places there. So a bit of a shift, um, a bit of a swap over in the pattern there uh, for us. In terms of the, the following week, the, the third week of April, looks like that high pressure might just then shift back westwards a little bit, the influence of that uh, becoming a bit less dominant. There's this generally big trough um, over uh, northern Scandinavia. Bear in mind this is the pressure anomaly, not the actual pressure pattern, but it just tends to suggest that there'll be below average pressure across Scandinavia. Still a bit of ridging across Southeast Europe, but the influence of this could affect much of, of central um, northern and, and parts of Western Europe as well. So looking at the rainfall, generally uh, a, a fairly unsettled looking picture for that third week of April. Those green colours showing uh, wetter than normal conditions and it's going to be quite showery, uh, potentially some spells of rain um, coming around the, the northern side of that high uh, with that trough there as well. In terms of temperatures, that's going to mean it's going to be quite cool across Scandinavia and northwestern and even parts of Iberia as well. Um, so quite a chilly feel to the weather for the north and west of Europe, but still relatively mild um, for further east and further southeast um, with a bit more ridging and a bit more of a southwesterly flow, bringing some milder air there. So a bit of a mixed picture over the next few weeks. There should be some dry weather around, but then again, it could also be quite unsettled at times. In the short term, I think it is going to become more unsettled for the rest of this week and into the weekend. We've got some rain showers and potentially some wintry showers over western, hill, western hills around as well. Into next week, it could be quite warm, uh, like I say, highs possibly up to 18, 19 or 20 degrees in the south and east during Monday, Tuesday, perhaps Wednesday. Um, but a lot of uncertainty going forward for the, for the early and middle part of next week as to the exact pressure situation and whether that high will build in or whether we get something more unsettled. So a lot of uncertainty going through next week. It's definitely worth keeping an eye on the forecast and staying on top of things. But then hints of something drier and cooler into the second week of April. So thanks for watching this week's video. As ever, if you've got any questions, you can leave them below or follow us on social media um, or drop us an email at info at weatherquest.co.uk. Thanks for watching.